Here he is, one half of the team, Donnie and Dolly, on Czech Television, weekdays from 10 a.m. till noon. It's our Canucks Insider, Friday regular, Mr. Rick Dollywall. Rick, um, you know you're sharing Fridays with Ray Ferraro going forward here, huh? Let's oh, some price. studded Friday. All right. R&R and, Friday. So don't you put words raise, in this. Ray's former Brandon Weekings in town to take on the Vancouver Giants ah, tonight. Yeah. Look at the symmetry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Ray was uh, a part of some uh, good teams. And, I, you know, I, I, I look back, uh, I go back to the 80s at Queen's Park and New West Bruins and Cliff Ronning was getting – you know, well over 100 points. Uh, you know, there were defensemen getting a point a game. I miss uh, those numbers in junior hockey. And Ray played on some teams in Brandon. You know, I, I think Builder Lego was there and, and all those guys. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's uh, – uh, I miss those junior players. I remember uh, Hoggard, mm. the defenseman in Kamloops, had over 100 points. I, 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 I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, I just miss those days when junior teams had six, seven, eight, nine guys – they were averaging more more than a point a game, and now you go to junior rosters, and you're lucky if two or three guys are yeah. averaging a, a point a game over a season. Matt and I weren't alive back then, but if you could tell us more stories about what it was like, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Price. Hey, Price. Hey, hey, by the way, hey, hold it a second. I, I want to get something in. So I uh, was in West Kelowna a couple of weekends ago at uh, West Kelowna, a Warriors game, and I ran yeah. into Steve T- Steve Tambellini. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. And Tambellini kind of, and he comes up to me, and he's just he's happy to see me. And he says, hey, Rick. And I said, hey, Steve. And, you know, he goes on and say, he says, I listen to you guys, you and Donnie, every day. And then at the very end, you know what he said that blew me away? He says, mm-hmm. I also uh, I love it when you're on Sakaris and Price. Ah. And so, and I know why he loves it, because he told me he loves it when I hammer uh, uh, Price. <laughs> Mr. Know-it-all, <laughs> cocky, arrogant Price. So, if Steve Tambellini, if you're listening today, buddy. <laughs> I'm ripping them. I'm ripping them. And Let's... by the way, uh, just hold on a sec. Let me get this in. Steve Tambellini, great guy. And I'm going to tell you something else. Uh, <laughs> he's doing a wonderful job for uh, Seattle Kraken. There you go. Okay. Let's move on to these Vancouver Canucks. Ilya Mikheyev is close. He skated in a right-wing spot, which Hoaglander held down with Patterson. What can you tell us about Mikheyev? But also uh, Dermot Myers and uh, Di Giuseppe. Yeah, McCabe's getting close. Obviously, uh, he's got to come off the LTIR, and when he does, he'll play. Uh, obviously, uh, next week, uh, McCabe should be in the lineup. He is close. Uh, there's nothing uh, of major concern there. They're taking their time with him, and why not? Uh, worst thing you can do is bring him back early, and then he gets hurt, hurt again. But I was told that Myers, Dermott, and D. Giuseppe are practicing this week while the Canucks were on the road, so those are good signs. Uh, Myers, lower body, Dermott, if you're allowed to skate and you got a concussion, that's a good sign. And Di Giuseppe's a lower body. So Mm -hmm. it looks like and it appears, guys, the Canucks are uh, definitely definitely getting healthier, which is uh, a good sign for the hockey club. The cavalry is coming. Good, good stuff. Uh, Before we move on to uh, some current Canucks, uh, let's talk about the head coach or the former head coach. You talked to Travis Green this week. Is that right? Earlier this week, uh, I had a good chat with uh, uh, Travis Green. He's going to go to Europe soon and work with some teams, uh, learn and get better. Look, guys, coaches are just like players. They have to get better Mm -hmm. every single year. They have to be on top of the new drills and the new systems and all that. You know, coaches have clinics, too. Uh, Coaches have clinics, too, and they they go over new stuff. And, you know, I I, I know uh, a junior hockey coach recently that, you know, uh, was let go. And when I asked, uh, you know, uh, somebody – closely attached uh, you know he wasn't in on the new systems and all that so the coaches are no different than the players guys they have to study but Travis told me he's still studying the NHL watches every game waiting for his next opportunity some feel he was close guys in Florida before Paul Maurice got the job definitely got an interview there and uh, I think this is the first time Travis told me uh, that uh, he was either six or seven years old uh, that he has started a season without a hockey team so uh, <laughs> he's going to head over to Europe works with some teams overseas, and uh, just uh, he's got to stay sharp, guys, because you don't know when the call is going to come. And so much pressure from owners uh, to GM to coaches, and you know a bad start, guys. Who, there's already polls out there. Who's the first coach that's going to be fired? Yeah. <laughs> now, if, there's a, if a coach does get fired, you'd have to think Travis Green is a candidate uh, to take over. So he's doing his due diligence, making he, sure he's still sharp and making sure – that he continues uh, to be ready if that opportunity arises. Horvat, 
season has started, no extension. I know you had Pat Morris's agent on the show. Blake and I picked up that, boy, was Canuck Nation all over Bo Horvat in the opener. And we yeah. do wonder whether, you know, his contractual status will have some Canucks fans sort of making a psychological break or viewing him this year a little less kindly than they have in the past as the negotiations continue. Um, they're still talking. Is there a plan to continue to talk through the season? Well, this is a, this was a concern of mine. Uh, being a captain in a hot Canadian market is tough enough, right, guys? You mm-hmm. saw what happened in Winnipeg last year. The captain got the seat taken away. It's really tough. There's a lot of burden. There's a lot of uh, responsibility, the whole nine yards. And, you know, Bo Horvat's a, uh, a guy that's in the final year of his contract. Um, obviously, it looks like there's a lot of work to do. They talked all summer. Um, there's a lot of work to do before a deal's done. The thing that uh, stuck out for me in the Pat Morris interview was that he said to us that Bo's the number one centerman or 1A. And now you know why the Sean Couturier comp is out there because Couturier makes 7.7. 7. I, I was told in the summer, guys, it's definitely going to be in the sevens. I was told in the sevens. I didn't know Couturier is 7.7, 7, um, but I was definitely told that the ask was yeah. going to be in the summer. Rick, and that help, was me the, out. Help, help me out. Yeah. When he said that, that he's yeah. the number, a number. Like, did you or Donnie challenge yeah. him on that? Because there's just okay. no world where he's a, a number one centerman, right? Okay, like, but hold it a second. Here's where it's I'll a come sixty-one back point it. career high. It's a thirty-one goal career high. Like, okay, does not a number one centerman I, make the only the only defense I got for you, uh, Matt and Blake, is there's the top ten teams in the NHL. There's the ten in the middle and a twelve at the bottom. You don't tell me. You can't tell me that Bo Horvat can't be a top centerman on some of the weaker teams in the National Hockey League. Most likely. So you know what, Ricky, is you could be a... the number one centerman on the Arizona Coyotes. For <laughs> yeah, but that, yeah. if so it's the Arizona just, Coyotes, everybody's no, no. Number one and, and but that's why you ask mm-hmm. the question: Is he a number mm-hmm. one centerman? I would say to you, on some teams, yes. On some teams, no. So hey, look. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, when you look, and, and here's what I got a pretty good feeling with Pat Morris, you have mm-hmm. to go back to Jacob Markstrom. Who represented Jacob Markstrom? Pat Morris. And what happened there? He went to free agency. And you know why he went to free agency? Because Pat knew when free agency started, among the goalies available on July 1st, that year, Jacob was very high on the list. So I'm going to take you to this year. I want you to fast forward to free agency, the right. center class for July 1st. Two names pop out to me, Bo Horvat and Dylan Larkin. Pat Morris, I'm telling you, when he looks at the free agent class for centers on July 1st, it doesn't matter if you think that Bo Horvat's a, a 1A center or a 1 center or whatever. All I can tell you is when you look at centermen on July 1st, and, and Pat mentioned this two or three times, he said yep. he's going to be fine. He's in a good spot. That's Very why fair. he's saying... Yeah, so Very that's fair. why comparatively saying, speaking, yeah. uh, if Horvat makes it to unrestricted free agency, where Dylan Larkin, they're both going to hit the jackpot because of the Thank scarcity you. of centimeters. And and no, when you no hit July, uh, yeah, and when you hit July first, you mm-hmm. don't need ten teams after you. You just need the one silly team to give you the silly offer. Mm-hmm. And every what, what does Brian Burke say about July first? He always says it's like drunken sailors. You know, on July first, mm-hmm. someone's going to give out the stupid dumb contract, but. Um, I it can't will be say the Canucks, though. That's, that's the thing, though. Okay. Right? Yeah, it can't yeah. be the Canucks. Yeah. No, but from their and, perspective, and they don't care, Blake. Uh, you know, they like don't care, they, Blake. They're no, moving on. They're moving not. on yeah. from the Canucks. So, yeah. And, and mm-hmm. Dylan Larkin, just so you guys know, let's say Dylan Larkin and the Red Wings cut a deal. Then that leaves Bo as the number one center on free agency. He's gonna. He's, he'll do fine. He'll do. I don't know if he'll get what he wants, but he'll do fine. There'll be a lot of teams after Bo Horvat on July 1st mm-hmm. if he's the only centerman out so, there is, so or then, is the top centerman. So mm-hmm. what do the Canucks do about that? What they can do is they can sign Bo Horvat to a reasonable deal. Maybe it begins yep. with a seven after all, and then try to trade somebody else. Or yep. they trade somebody else and then feel the breath of, uh, or the, the freedom uh, under the mm-hmm. cap and and sign Bull Horvat. See, you can't tra- you can. Of course you can trade Bull Horvat before the trade deadline. Yeah. But with no deal with no years left, you're only going to be able to reap so much in that trade, right? Because it's a pure rental deal for that team or they're going to yeah. try to negotiate with them um upon the consummation of the trade. But yeah. you get more bang for the buck signing, 
him and then trading somebody else. Maybe it's Miller. Yeah. Maybe it's Besser. Maybe, well, how do you see this playing out? Because I don't, I don't see them just well, straight out trading the UFA to be Bull Horvat. Okay, and the other thing I want to get in that Pat said that was important was, uh, you know, and Bo instructed him in the summer to get the deal done with Vancouver. Bo, when I talked to uh, the Canucks about Bo Horvat, they rave about him. And why wouldn't you? He's been absolutely phenomenal since he got here on the ice, off the ice. Uh, there's never been an issue with him. Uh, he's good in the community, good with charities. Go look at his uh, Twitter account. It's, uh, it's always family, family, family. He's been, he's been a model citizen. He's been good on the ice, 30 two goals last year uh, look here's the thing they they, they, they will try everything uh, uh, Blake and Matt to mm-hmm. try and sign them first I mean why not I mean look how strong they are up the middle not many teams can say they got Miller Patterson or Hor- Horvat up the middle uh, them the goaltender all-star goalie the all-star defenseman in Hughes and three strong up the middle. That's a that's a pretty good way to start a hockey team. I remember Pat Quinn always talking about the importance of they always used to ask him how to build a hockey club. And one of his first things he would always say is up the middle, build up the middle. And the Canucks are very strong up the middle. So look, honestly, Blake, you can we can talk about five hundred scenarios like we did with JT Miller mm-hmm. and then we all got shot down when he signed. Uh, I, I think we take it week by week, month by month, and I think they try and cut a deal. They talked the other day. I do know uh, Pat told us they talked uh, two, three days ago. I know before the two or three days ago, it was a pretty lengthy period of time where they didn't talk. So I think um, the Canucks want him back. Bo's instructed his uh, agent to get the deal uh, done in Vancouver and, and let them work at it and see if they can get it done. Uh, I, I don't think for what he's worth to this team – I don't think they trade him because I don't think I don't they get think enough they back for them. I don't think they yeah. get enough back for him for what he mm-hmm. actually is. I think they'd rather trade another guy under contract that might be worth yeah. more on the open market. Besser with the years left is probably worth more than Horvat with no years left. Even well, though we'll see yeah, how Besser we'll see how Besser does. Like right. Besser has to yeah. earn what the money he's making right now. I mean, last absolutely year he does. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and and you guys know the quest uh, for this team is, uh, you know, a right shot D under the age of 26. They've been looking and looking and looking for that for a long time, uh, not from a lack of trying. Uh, mm-hmm. They have, uh, you know, looked and looked and looked for that right shot D, a young guy, and I think that pursuit of that will not end. I think they're going to continue yeah. to try and find that somehow, someday. You have a uh, tidbit, historical tidbit on Michael Furland. Uh, well, is, and, uh, and I, yeah, and I, and it, and I brought this up because, uh, you know, Michael Furlan, the Canucks have been trying to move his contract, not just now, even Jim Benning, after Michael, uh, you know, announced that he couldn't play hockey anymore. They were still trying to move it. it. It's not hard to figure out that if you can move it, why not try? But it's funny, you know, the Canucks are trying to move it, but they also tried uh, in the Jim, uh, Jim Benning era. It's not the first time. So in 2020, I'm going to take you guys back to 2020 when the Canucks acquired Nate Schmidt from Las Vegas. A part of that deal when they were talking, the Canucks called Furland's agent and asked him if he would waive a trade to Las Vegas, and the agent said yes. For some reason, it never happened, but Vegas entertained it, and the Canucks asked Furland to waive, and he did. I, I'm going to guess, I'm going to go back to 2020, and I remember, remember that trade that happened that night we were at uh, 1040, uh, and you guys were on the air. Yes, and, Schmidt. Uh, I, I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that, and the Schmidt trade. Um, Kelly McCrimmon, of course, had Furlan and Brandon with the Wheat Kings of the Western Hockey League. But I, I, but I can tell you uh, that in 2020, uh, the Canucks asked Furlan to wave to go to Vegas because Vegas asked that, and uh, Furlan said yes. But for some reason, uh, it never happened. But just an interesting little tidbit about Michael Furlan going back. I mm-hmm. think they've been trying to get rid of him, uh, the contract, I mean, uh, for quite some I do get the impression it wasn't the Canucks – pushing Furland to Vegas. I think it was an ask by uh, Vegas as a part of the Schmidt trade. So that mm-hmm. was the clarity that I was trying to get through to you. Circling guess. back to uh, the uh, defenseman, this sought-after defenseman, uh, they got yep. one. Uh, Kevin Bieksa uh, should drop in <laughs> at some point in the road trip. Um, Not under age 26, <laughs> but I hear you. <laughs> Kevin Bieksa signing a one-day uh, contract to officially retire as a Canuck. I uh, was texting with him last night. And uh, he was at his kids' hockey. He's very involved with his kids' hockey in Anaheim. And uh, 
He, he, he sent me a text apologizing for getting back to me. It was with the kids hockey. I go, look at, I'm just an idiot reporter in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. A family's first. And uh, he's, he's just a great family man. He's going to get it. Uh, definitely deserves it. But guys, I'm going to tell you right now, I always got a soft spot for late bloomers. I always got a soft spot for those guys that get to the NHL undrafted. And, and I just love those guys. Look at Bieksa, played junior A in Ontario, not the OHL. Fifth round pick out of Bowling Green University. Four years there, three years in Winnipeg. Was 25 when he got to the NHL, late bloomer. I always got a soft spot for those guys. They never give up. We put so much pressure on first and second round picks in Vancouver to get there right away, right away, right away. And guess what? Devon Tabes in Abbotsford. Same thing as uh, 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 Bieksa. Took his time, got to the NHL at 24-25. Taves, University, same, mm-hmm. exact same route as Bieksa. Four years, three years there, and then three, four years in the American League. And we put so much pressure on kids to make it today. They got to be great in bantam. They got to be great in junior. No, you don't. You just got to keep plugging away, get better every year, and keep plugging away and not give up. And I just love the Bieksa story, how he got to Vancouver, and then he ended up playing here 10 seasons, played with an edge, stuck up for his teammates, gave you over 20 minutes every night. Uh, it's a great story. Marvel. Add another uh, name to that list. Rick Dolan. Uh, La- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I, I, and I can tell you guys, and I'm not uh, ashamed to say it. I, I'm a late bloomer too. I got in this industry in 1988. No one believed in me. My own family didn't. And uh, I, I don't, it's, it's true. It's not, it's not funny. It's uh, I, I had multitude of reasons to quit. And, uh, but those five years I spent, I spent in small towns all over BC, Alberta, covering junior A, a junior B and senior hockey were the best five years of my life. But um, I just, and that's the reason I'm not going to lie to you guys. I have a spot, a s- soft spot for late bloomers and guys that weren't supposed to make it because every time there's something about the human spirit that when you don't give up, you can achieve your dreams. And Rick, so Rick, you were lighting this market on fire like 25 goodness. years ago. What no, are you talking no, about? No, no, no. I'm going back to 88 when I got in the industry. I, I had, I, I, I'm not, I'm not afraid to say it. I, I had no support, nothing. I mean, no one believed in me. The same people that listened to me on the radio back in the eighties were telling me I was an idiot for getting into this. You're not going to make it. And, and, but I'm just saying, that's why I mm-hmm. love hockey players who, uh, don't give up and in that human spirit and they keep going and they're not drafted mm-hmm. because uh, when you get an undrafted guy in the NHL, he leapfrogged at least 200 guys in the draft to get to the NHL. And I just love those guys and they never give up. They're always going to have a soft spot in my heart. Marvelous stuff. Uh, thank you for this, Ricky. We'll end no, it hold on. that, hold that. We'll, I want to get no, in this. No, uh, we'll end it on that sentimental uh, note, my man. Oh, you guys got to go. inspired us going into the weekend. Absolutely, buddy. You've inspired us going uh, into the weekend, of, you know. Last, last, last one, I'm out of crown, so i got to make a pit stop mm-hmm. Friday night. You enjoyed. We'll catch up next right. Friday.